It's Christmas at the Artisan Bakery in Whitley Bay and the door is starting to mount up. Uh, we've got a lot of bread to make tonight. It's now 5.30 in the evening and I've been basically making doughs all day. I started about 6 o'clock this morning uh, and we've got various things in different stages of production. The idea is to basically orchestrate all of the food that I've got to make tonight to ensure that it's all as fresh as possible for tomorrow morning. This is everybody's Christmas order. So we've got sourdoughs going on. In here in the mixing bowl, um, that's white sourdough. There's enough for about maybe 100 loaves in there. And in here we've got wholemeal sourdough. So I'm gonna have to pull this out because it needs to be... It's, it's being retarded at the moment, so uh, it might be a little bit too, too slow. I'll get that in the warm and speed things up because I'll need to bake that off through the night. Gotta get these buns on the go as well. These are some 100% whole meal loaves, so I'm going to put some oat flakes on the top and in order for them to stick, you've got to get the top of the dough wet. Nice these loaves. They've got orange juice in, quite a lot of orange juice actually. Um, and it's this lovely sweet soft dough. There was a baker here for a brief period of time and they were sort of one of his inventions but then I took them on and they're just really nice like this. The difficult part about tonight is making sure everything's as fresh as possible for the morning. Because because this is, these are people's Christmas orders, I always feel like I, and I want to do my best. I want to make sure everything's perfect. So there's a lot of pressure. And the problem with being a baker is at Christmas time, when you're doing all your orders, I mean, people, people, bread's got to be made fresh. So it's not like I could have done this like two or three days in advance and had everything ready. It all has to be produced on the evening before which is why the early start today and the, the long day and night session. It's a mission, but it's, um, I mean, it's satisfying when it all comes together. And it's starting to come, it's going well this year, I'm relatively well organized. So normally what would happen in the bakery is we will be open um, on the 23rd. Uh, our last day is always the 24th, we're closing the 24th. People pick up their orders then for Christmas. Um, but yeah, so normally we're open the 23rd and so it's normally really, really busy. But this year, I decided to close. So we closed the shop, which is a bit of a counter. Well, it was a really good move, to tell you the truth, because it meant that, you know, it would have been impossible. I spent all day doing this work, and then I would have had to have done work for, for today as well. And I just never would be as far as a, a, ahead as I am now. I'm never normally this, this far ahead. So, touch wood, things are going okay so far. Um, but yeah, the, the idea is to orchestrate it, so it's all really, really fresh and, and Ideally, what I want to do is give people warm bread. So if you come here in the morning, I always try and ensure that, like, if I can, that's when the bread's out the oven, bang on nine o'clock. Um, so it just it, it gives you a complete the experience of buying bread. It makes it far nicer. You go in, and you get a loaf of warm bread handy. It always puts a smile on anybody's face. I don't know how to slash these. Right, so you want uh, sugar from the big barrel? Okay, I need, I need to measure that up first. Well, the scale's on the bench. <sighs> yeah. This one? Um, and the... Yeah, use the one to clean on us. Which one's that? That girl, well, they're all clean. I hope so. 
Right, so come on, Rick, trying to get this on the bench. Uh, and it's gonna be upside. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of ounces. I need. 225 grams. 125 grams, 5 ounces. No, but I, I know, it was 4 ounces. No, it's between 4 and 5. So it's a little more than 28 grams in an ounce. So, just 100. No, I need that ounce in one. Why have you got a, a recipe of ounces? Those are from the dark ages. <laughs> I like ounces, it's easier. <laughs> No. How do I get that to zero? Press T. Oh. I thought it wasn't here. Yeah. I'll get you some sugar. You're stolen the whole enterprise here. What? How? You're gonna need that bitch. Not a second, you must be wasted. How much sugar do you need? Um, hang on. Five grams of caster sugar. Uh, I need some Christmas music. You've got Christmas music? Me? What? I need some Christmas music. Why? Right. To inspire me. It's hard to get out because it'll stick to each other. This is really strong wheat that I'm using here. And it's a Canadian, a blend of Canadian and British wheat. And it makes really strong flour. It's got loads of gluten. And I can see when it's stuck to each other, it's a mission to get out. sort of roughly it divides the dough up into 15 pieces so that saves me a lot of time scaling out each bun individually normally what I used to have to do was cut each one out at 170 grams and then round it with this thing at least it chops it up into the into the right um, the, roughly the right size so it's not as accurate as me it does it just have a bit of margin for error I've made some space so I can get these bannetons on somewhere you gotta give them a good rub of flour and that stops the dough sticking to them during the rising process. Scaling these off at 975 grams. The final weight of the loaf is about 850-880 grams. This is a bit of an issue for shaping them. 
they're all going to be shipped at the bloomers. And then they go upside down in the, ba the flowered banneton. Nice dough, it's nice and silky. When you um when you stretch it it doesn't tear. And what that means is the gluten is well developed. It's basically been allowed to swell up, it's absorbed a lot of water and swollen up. Makes it extra elastic. Banneton with the seam at the top because basically the top is the nice side that's going to be on the tray so when you flip it upside down to put it to big it you uh, turn it upside down and then you've got the side that you want up on the top and then that's the side you slash so the game here is to try and get your cuts close as possible to the target weight so basically what you want is to try and get as close to 975 as you can in as least as as few as cuts as possible. Ideally, you want to try and get it in a one. Let's go. There go. I give myself like ten grams either way. Oh, too much. My eyes not in. You've got to get your eye in. Once your eyes in, it's it's possible to go crazy accurate like all the time. Nine six four, so nine six eight, nine six four. Oh, this is going to be too heavy. I need to cut some of this off. Yeah, so it's ten fifty. We we'll take that much off, and it's nine forty. Oh, oh, good. Nine four. Oh, that's too heavy. When you're shaping bread, you don't want to have too much flour. If you've got too much flour on the bench, it start everything slides around and you can't get any good surface tension. What you're basically trying to do when you shape bread is create a really tight shape that holds itself together as it rises. If the gluten isn't stretched really tight in, in like a, a circle, it just relaxes like that and just forms like a puddle on the, on the bottom of the tray. Surface tension is, is it's the key, basically, to get a nice shaped loaf. Bannetons now of the long shape, so I'm going to call it an emergency service. These round bannetons, people don't like these as much, but you know what it is on Christmas Eve, you don't really get a choice. If you want a loaf, you get what you're given. There's going to be a lot of people turning up tomorrow without any orders in, just expecting to like just buy loads of bread and guarantee it. And you know, people have had long enough to get their orders in, so can't help everybody.
And this stuff here is going to have to go to Trace, so I don't have any more Bannetons. Um, so I just ship them into Bloomers and do five on a tray. The only problem is my trays are all covered in buns, so I'm going to have to get those buns off. I need these trays so if I get the tea cakes bagged up, that's another job done. Look, the magic has happened with the buns. They're lovely now. <laughs> when I first got them out, they were way darker than that, and then this crazy, mysterious process happens and they become lighter. But look, they're all lovely and soft and, and fluffy now. There's gonna be a lot of people having turkey sandwiches tomorrow in those. No, they're not. They're gonna be having turkey sandwiches in those on Christmas Day, tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Transferred all of the white sourdough into the fridge. Obviously, I want to slow down the fermentation. It's starting to rise a bit too quickly, um, and I'm not going to have any trays to, to bake it on. Plus, I don't want to bake it till the very end. I want that one to be red hot come nine o'clock. So I want to be taking out the oven like eight o'clock, really. So here's the wholemeal loaves come out. They look pretty good. I'm going to put them here because it's the only space I can find at the moment. So you got to watch these because they're stodgier. They're certainly stodgier than, bre um, than bread with white flour in as well. When it's all wholemeal, you got to make sure you fully prove it. Otherwise, you can let, leave it doughy in the middle. And because they've got orange juice in as well, it makes them quite sweet. So there's a lot of sugar in there. So when you're baking, it's quite, quite easy to burn the top. It's been a few hours and these sourdoughs have woken up a bit. You see how they're much more risen than they were before. I'll get these baked off and then get another couple of loads in. So these are um, wholemeal and rye sourdough. It's a mixture of wholemeal wheat flour and wholemeal rye flour. It's a little bit like a French pan de campan. It's nice.
So next up we've got granary sourdough. Now we're going to make some farmhouse bread, so we're going to make white and wholemeal. Uh, where's my list? 22, 14, so that's what? 6, 5, 16. So we need about 20 kilos of white. One kilo is a good luck.
canister is pretty much ready in here so give it another 30 seconds and get that out Okay, so I need a bit of decoration for my mince pies, which I'll come to in a moment. So what I'm going to do is roll this marzipan out with a fair bit of flour, and then just bake it off, and it goes into like a sort of almond biscuit. It's very easy to do. Trying to work a bit of the flour into the marzipan. Here we've got the granary sourdough. It's looking well. So this is what this looks like when it's baked. It doesn't take very long, it only takes a couple of minutes. Um, so the idea here, you let it cool down and then cut it into the shape that you want while it's still warm. And then as it cools, it goes crispy rock hard. So next to deal with we've got our um, fruit breads. So these are spiced tea breads with, um, well they're stuffed with cherries and raisins, literally stuffed. Um, you can see in there how many cherries are inside. But these are gonna go into plastic bags as well. The thing about these, they do keep for two or three days. Once you put them in a bag, you can keep them for a while. And um, most people eat these sliced and toasted with butter. Next thing's to bake off these potato stotties. So this is mashed potato mixed with bread flour. Um, I'll give them a little poke like that. And that just stops them rising too much. Because they are stotties after all. Northern flatbreads. You gotta pay attention because these need turning over halfway through the bake and it doesn't take very long at all. Got lucky with these. I just forgot to turn them over. I was just two minutes too late. Oh, 
gonna be okay. I'm desperate not to burn anything because if I burn anything, it means I've got to do it again. And I must admit, I'm flagging right now, like I'm running out of energy. Uh, it's about midnight now. I guess it's only natural that my uh, my energy reserves are running low. I'm sure I'll get a second wind soon. I mean, it's time for a coffee. So this farmhouse mix has been in here for about three hours. It's well risen. That's next up on the bench, we'll get that turned into some loaves. On my day, near Newcastle, um, and there's a little stream there called the Beal, which has a, which has a hat, a trout in it, and a good mayfly hatch then. So um, he, he basically came from rural Ireland, but his father appears to have been a land agent, and he managed a farms, and I have a suspicion he's one of these. I don't know if you know, um, during the famine, uh, or before the famine, they, they, the, the thing that caused them the famine was sharecropping, which was a, a, a wonderful uh, English idea. And the, um, his given father may have been one of the middlemen who managed to...
Imagine tomorrow afternoon, turkey sandwiches, Branson pickle, Britain will be a happy place. Bread singing. So we're going pretty well. We've just got these to prove up a little bit and then they, they're going to go in they're not going to take very long to prove at all I think, I think another 25 minutes will do them at most um, and then we've got a load of white sourdough to go into the bottom along with these and everything else is coming together we've got us done ready we have set out all the pastries and savouries before we've got plenty of those things going on tea cakes Fruit loaves, buns, these aren't going to stay here. Um, there's just nowhere to store anything, so I've just shoved anything in here so I could clear the trays and use the trays again. But we've got everything, so we had a couple of orders for things like the potato study, so I've just made like eight of them. Um, and these ones as well, there was only like a couple of orders for those, but I thought, well, I might as well make a small batch, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. We've got plenty of mince pies, I'm going to move them, put them in the fridge in a second. And then we've got 150 million buns. So once the farmhouse is baked off, then there's just the, the white sourdoughs. Now the pack of some of this scullin. There you go, that's what you get for your money.
go, the obligatory drift of icing sugar. There you go. One last look. Okay, so I've just got some more mince pies to finish off. Um, I've, had, I've only got two trays of 12, so I only bake them in batches of 24. Um, the nice, um, I use a lot of almonds in the pastry for these, so I use half flour and half almonds, and it gives a lovely pastry. This is um, whiskey flavoured buttercream, I just got a little dab of that. Oh, it's got really hard in the fridge. So crispy marzipan seals. And because it's Christmas, give them a liberal dowsing with ice and sugar. Christmas delivered. Bags upon bags of orders. 12 minutes prize are under the um, 
the More flipping bread. Cakes, etc. Stop looking so miserable, you sods. We're all making that easy. There it is. I wonder how long the queue is. I don't know Right, what time is it? 8.56, four glorious minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make them wait every second today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever made as much as this, you know. I don't, I don't think I've ever made this much bread. So that's it, we're at the end pretty much, we're going to close up in about half an hour. There's a few little bits and pieces left, uh, but to be honest, compared to what there was, it's just, it's, it's hardly anything. So that'll go to the food bank, um, nothing will be wasted. All the orders have been collected bar one. Thank you to all our artisan bakery customers, and I hope everybody has a good Christmas. I'm certainly looking forward to a nice break now. So it's about... 
3.30 in the afternoon and I've been here since 6 a.m. yesterday, so I think I've done my duty. Um, over to you, Santa Claus.